The world thinks it understands the Gripen. Light, cheap, smart, a small fighter for small nations. But what if I told you that one single change under the hood could flip that whole story and redraw maps of influence across continents? Stay with me, because the engine inside this jet is more than metal. It is power, politics, and a costly chess piece. Imagine a fighter that is nimble, easy to operate, and ideal for countries that do not want to buy the most expensive gear on the market. That is the Gripen image. For years, Saab sold the Gripen on that promise. The Gripen E and F models built on that promise by giving more range, more electronics, and a bigger payload. At the center of that upgrade sits a heart most people never see. It is the engine that turns political choices into real capability. Today, that heart is the General Electric F414 series. That engine gives the Gripen the thrust and reliability needed to compete with bigger fighters while keeping costs relatively low. The Gripen's choice of the F414 was not only a technical decision but also a political one because who supplies your engine matters as much as who supplies your radar. Start plus one. Now imagine a different possibility. Imagine Sweden or one of the Gripen export customers replacing that American engine with a new power plant from a British company or a European consortium or even a local national champion. Suddenly the aircraft is not just a Swedish design with American parts. It becomes a platform tied to a new industrial network, a new supply chain, and new political ties. That is why talk about new engines for fighters is not only about performance. It is about who gets jobs, who gets tech transfers, and who gains influence in a region. Let us break this down. The Gripen E and F were designed to be modern and affordable. They carry advanced sensors, a modern cockpit, and enough weapons to be effective in modern conflicts. But engines are the limiting factor for endurance, for payload, and for future upgrades. The F414 gives the Gripen E a big leap over earlier models. It delivers around 22,000 pounds of thrust and a throttle response suited for fast jet operations. That thrust level is what allows the Gripen to add more fuel, more weapons, or heavier sensors, and still remain nimble. The result is an aircraft that can do more missions for less cost per flight hour when compared to many twin-engine rivals. Performance is one thing, dependence is another. When your engine comes from a single foreign supplier, you depend on that supplier for spare parts, for maintenance, and for political permission to upgrade or export. That can become an Achilles heel if a supplier's government decides to limit exports or technology transfers. That is a reality every procurement officer must consider. It is why some countries press for local production or for alternative suppliers. It is also why engine talks become intensely political at the highest levels. Enter Rolls-Royce in a changing industrial landscape for engines. In recent years, the big engine makers have not only chased civilian contracts, but also eyed military opportunities. Rolls-Royce has been quietly rebuilding its profile in aerospace beyond its long-standing civil business. The company has ambitions and partnerships that could place it in the middle of next-generation fighter engine competitions. When a major non-American engine maker moves into the fighter market, that can open doors for countries that prefer to avoid political ties to the United States, or that want to build stronger ties with Europe and Asia. News reports have shown how nations and companies are actively lobbying and negotiating to shift engine supply lines. That pressure can reshape who buys what. Think about buyers like South Korea, India, Brazil, and several nations across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Their choices are influenced by cost, by technology transfer promises, and by the desire to build a local defense industry. If a credible non-American engine becomes available for a platform like the Gripen, it changes the offer on the table. A Gripen with a European engine might be easier for some countries to accept because it could come with different export rules and different partnerships. Even more if the new engine comes with local assembly or deeper technology transfer, it becomes a political prize. It means factories, engineers trained locally, and a narrative of domestic capability rather than foreign dependence. There is one more layer. New engine programs today are rarely national projects. They are consortiums. They bring companies from different countries together to share risk and to build supply chains that cross borders. Examples in the fighter world show how engine development for next-generation fighters often involves teams from several countries. When that happens, 
Selecting a particular engine is not just a technical choice. It becomes a nod to a whole industrial ecosystem. That ecosystem can tilt alliances. It can create long-term dependencies. It can open civilian spillovers in manufacturing, materials science, and high technology. These are not small things. They are the building blocks of future influence. You may ask, how close are we to seeing a true alternative to the F-414 on the Gripen? The short answer is that it is complicated but feasible. Swapping an aircraft engine is not like swapping a car engine. It requires redesigns to the airframe, to intake geometry, to fuel systems, and to maintenance regimes. It is expensive, it is risky, but it is not impossible. The incentive for manufacturers and governments is high. If a national or multinational engine maker offers a package that includes not just the engine, but local jobs and technology transfer, that can tip decisions in some export contests. For nations with rising defense budgets and industrial ambitions, that package can be irresistible. Consider the marketplace in practical terms. Saab has successfully marketed the Gripen as a flexible, export-friendly fighter. The Gripen's production model includes partnerships, local offsets, and industrial cooperation. That sales model makes it easier to imagine a future Gripen variant that can accept different engines depending on the buyer. Saab has always emphasized modularity and the ability to adapt to partner needs. Suppose an engine supplier can match performance while offering more political comfort or better industrial return. Will change the aircraft's flight characteristic. Engineers must decide whether the benefits of a new political alignment outweigh the technical penalties and the costs of redesign. Financial matters play a central role as well. Engine development is one of the most expensive parts of aircraft program. For a manufacturer like Rolls-Royce or GE or Pratt & Whitney, the question is whether they will recoup their investment through sales and long-term maintenance contracts. For nations, the question is whether paying more now for local assembly or better political terms will save money or strategic headaches later. We have seen this pattern before. Nations have willingly paid more to get control over maintenance and spare parts because the alternative was strategic vulnerability. Then there is the export control reality. U.S. supplied engines mean U.S. export control rules. Those rules can limit who gets what and under what condition. That factor alone has altered procurement decisions in various cases. If an alternative engine is available from a supplier that does not impose the same restrictions, that can broaden the potential market for the aircraft. For countries that have tense relations with the US or that want more freedom in how they use or upgrade weapons, that freedom has tangible value. It is not theoretical. It affects procurement decisions day to day. Let us not ignore the strategic messaging either. When a country chooses a particular engine supplier, it sends a message. It signals alignment or at minimum, a willingness to cooperate with that supplier's home country and industrial base. In the modern era where alliances are fluid and where regional power balances matter, those messages can be as relevant as the hardware itself. An aircraft equipped with a non-American engine can be presented as a symbol of independence and of a new industrial path. Buyers looking for that narrative may favor such options. There are also ripple effects into training and sustainment. A different engine changes maintenance procedures. It changes the supply chain for spare parts. It changes training for technician. If a country wants to build a domestic maintenance base, it will very likely demand some level of technology transfer and local production. Engine makers know this and will negotiate accordingly. Those bargains shape the industrial map for decades. They mean more than just jobs. They mean domestic capacity to repair, upgrade, and even export systems in the future. So, what does all this mean for global power? A reorientation of engine supply chains can redistribute the centers of industrial gravity. If European or Asian engine makers win more military contracts, they will create dependencies and partnerships that reshape alliances. Those relationships influence procurement decisions for ships, radars, missiles, and logistics. They influence who can operate together in a crisis and who can support each other in peacetime. In short, engines are lever points. They can move industrial muscle and political influence across borders. We are already seeing signs of competition beyond traditional part. Governments and companies are actively promoting local partnerships, joint ventures, and technology transfer deals. That is not a new trend. 
but its scale is growing. The stakes are high because defense manufacturing carries spillovers into civilian industry and research. The skills and materials used in engines feed into power systems, materials science, and advanced manufacturing. Whoever leads in engine technology will shape more than just military hardware. They will shape economic plans and long-term technological leadership. Now let us bring this closer to home. If you live in a country that is considering the Gripen, this matters to you as a taxpayer and as a voter. Choosing one engine over another may affect where factories are built, how many engineers are trained, and how much control your country has over its own defense. It will determine whether your Air Force can upgrade its jets without political friction. It will also shape the kinds of diplomatic ties your country strengthens. For the Gripen program itself, the flexibility to work with multiple engine partners is an asset. It keeps the platform competitive and creates options for buyers who care as much about politics and industry as they do about flight performance. Saab's approach to partnerships and local production has already given the Gripen sales wins in several markets. If a viable alternative to the F-414 becomes available and offers comparable performance and better industrial terms, the Gripen's attractiveness could soar. That could shift regional air balances, because buyers who previously avoided the Gripen due to engine politics might now reconsider. There is a cautionary note. The technology and cost hurdles of engine swaps are real. Past attempts to change power plants on fighters have shown how difficult and expensive the process can be. Any decision must weigh immediate costs against long-term strategic gain. That calculus is central to defense planning and to national budgets. It is also why such decisions often take years and involve complex negotiations between governments and companies. Let us not forget that engines are also being reimagined for efficiency and for environmental concerns. New designs focus on lower fuel burn and on materials that allow higher temperatures and better performance. Those advances increase range and reduce operating cost. They also open the possibility of more covert operations through improved endurance and lower logistics footprints. For countries thinking long-term, the promise of greener, more efficient engines can be a strong selling point. In the next decade, expect more jockeying around engine supply. Expect nations to use procurement as a way to lock in industrial cooperation and to build domestic capacities. Expect engine makers to compete not only on technical merit, but on the depth of their industrial offers. And expect the Gripen program to be in the middle of that contest, because its core selling point is flexibility and affordability. So when you hear the phrase, new engine could shift global power, but do not dismiss it as marketing. A new power plant can change where factories sit, which countries train technicians, who gets access to spare parts, and who calls the shots when conflict or crisis arrives. It can alter political balances as surely as a new base or a new treaty can. The Gripen is a live example of how an aircraft is more than metal and software. It is a node in a larger network of industry, politics, and strategy. To finish, here is a clear takeaway. The Gripen's real strength has always been adaptability. Its future strength will be decided not only by wings and radar, but by the choices made about the engine under its hood. If new engine suppliers can match the F414's performance, while offering better industrial terms and fewer political strings, then the Gripen may find new customers and new roles. That is how aircraft shape geopolitics. That is how a single machine becomes part of a larger story about power and who holds it. If you want more plain talk about jets, engines, and how defense choices shape the world, hit like and subscribe. It helps me make deeper dives like this and keeps you in the loop on the next big shift in air power.